Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Happy to welcome our friend Kevin Miller from Habitat for Humanity. Good morning. Good morning. And the Restore. Yeah. Which has moved not too recently, but yeah, for a while Yeah, it's been a while, while now. now. Yeah, we put everything together down on Raff Road. Uh, the address is 1400 Raff Road Southwest, still in Canton. Um, and it's been great ever since. We love having that move. Um, only seven miles from where Restore was before on Cleveland Avenue. You remember that store? I do. Um, so it's a, it's a quick trip. And now we've got 30,000 square feet uh, in one location of all the stuff that's donated and, uh, and subsequently on sale price all the time. It's Nice for us to remember that this is a place we can take our things when yeah. you're ready to refurbish something or do something. This is a great place to call and it you is. pick up. We do for free. And um, yeah, it's a great place for that. And it's a great place, like for example, this time of year, lots of yard sales going on. Mm-hmm. If you don't have everything sell, which is you know a typical thing we all deal with from time to time when we do yard sales, right. give us a call. Um, our number is 330-915-5920. Like I said, we do offer free donation pickup. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, instead of just junking that stuff or trying to sell it next year, you can get a tax deduction for your donation to Restore, and we can come and get it for free. Um, We also do online scheduling, which is pretty great. You you don't even have to pick up a phone uh, to schedule a donation at Restore. (laughs) Um, And that website address is RestoreECO.org slash donation. Uh, And you can just uh, pick... Uh, a time that works for you and uh, we'll get there to your house and the restore truck magically appears. It's awesome. Someone's driving and they're saying, wait, what was all that again? So yeah. let's give the phone let's number one so more time. I get excited when I, I talk know. about it's restore. It's exciting. Let's yeah. give the phone so, number yeah. again. The donation uh, phone number or just information about restore mm-hmm. is 330-915-5920. Great. Or and you that can website. go online. Yeah. At restoreeco.org. That's easy. So there's two E's in a row then. Correct. Yeah. Restore East Central Ohio, uh, Habitat East Central Ohio. We follow the same website. Perfect. Sort of protocol. It's all right there. We'll get that again before we let you go. Great. So you recently had um, some kind of a, a big dedication. Yeah, on the habitat side. This is this is great. So let me back up just for a moment because mm-hmm. we have this big project going on in the northeast side of Canton. We call it the Renewal Project. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Habitat for Humanity, it's our four-year, $3.5 million uh, holistic neighborhood revitalization program. It's the first time we've ever brought everything that Habitat does, new construction, rehab construction, demolition, um, critical home repair, minor home repair. We brought it all together to impact one neighborhood. This was a neighborhood that uh, was what we call a tipping neighborhood, where if it gets a little bit worse, it's going to be so far gone that it's going to be impossible to bring it back. Um, But we saw also a lot of positive signs of life in that neighborhood. High home ownership rates, a lot of neighborhood pride, very active neighborhood association. Uh, And so we just put all of our effort in this uh, Northeast Canton neighborhood at the same time doing processes Mm -hmm. and projects throughout the rest of East Central Ohio. Again, we cover five counties. Um, And so so investing this way in in the Northeast Canton neighborhood has has been so amazing. Uh, We're now halfway through that project. Uh, It's fully funded, all three and a half million dollars, fully funded. We've uh, impacted directly about 40 families with all of those project types that I've mentioned before. And then on a larger scale, Uh, For example, we've installed a pocket park. We've installed um, a bike repair station. Um, There's a new bus stop in the area through Sarda. Um, We've done sidewalk uh, efforts as well. And so now, literally, besides the direct impact on those 40 families, hundreds of families in this neighborhood have been impacted by the Mm -hmm. positive work um, of Habitat for Humanity in this community. And it's because people uh, in the city and uh, neighborhoods uh, like this and residents in this neighborhood are coming around the efforts of Habitat. We couldn't do it without the partnerships that make this sort of thing go. Uh, And so we're celebrating that. And you're right, we had a big event last week. We called it a Renewal Project Dedication, Mm -hmm. um, where we celebrated two, just two of the families who who are part of that neighborhood. One new construction, um, one preserve a home project in that neighborhood. Katie and Ashley, they got their keys. Uh, They made Uh their first zero interest mortgage payment. Uh, We heard from city officials. We heard from other neighborhood residents. Uh, Willie and Christine are two residents in that neighborhood who shared a little bit about what that uh, project has meant to that community. Mm -hmm. Um, We also heard from uh, Ava from the Neighborhood Association. She talked about how great this project was and what it means to them. Uh, And so we're celebrating that as a big part of Habitat for Humanity's recent news and history because it's just it's a monumental project Mm -hmm. um, and intimidating on the outset. 
But now two years in, here we are seeing these results, seeing lives changing, seeing residents who are aging in place become healthy and more self-sufficient, seeing uh, folks who just couldn't um, feel safe in their own neighborhood, feeling safe again. Uh, There's an excitement. Uh, It's palpable in the neighborhood. You can feel it. Uh, And we couldn't be more thrilled and thankful for all the people that come around that. That's, again, city officials. That's um, what we call the Renewal Project Partners, people who have helped us financially secure that three and a half million dollars. Um, and then all the all the uh, engaged residents of the neighborhood who are making it happen with things like cleanup efforts yes. uh, and advocacy and you see all people that start sort to of care. Stuff. Yeah. And it's happening throughout the entire neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, wh- what does that mean for the future? Not entirely sure. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, we <laughs> want to keep doing that more and more and more because uh, it's just such a, a phenomenal transformation yes. and um, a, a, a community that was very close to being written off. Uh, yes. Is now just coming surging back to life. It's what pretty awesome. What streets are you talking about specifically? Yeah, let me um, let me get this right here. So um, uh, we are talking about uh, from 25th to 16th Streets Northeast, mm-hmm. and from Harrisburg to Royal Avenues Northeast. Um, it, it's the Harrisburg Royal neighborhood, mm-hmm. uh, and it's just a, a powerful collection of people that believe that their community is worth investing in, worth yes. protecting, uh, and we're excited to continue those efforts over the next couple of years as we finish up this renewal project. By the end, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds of families um, directly and indirectly impacted with positive community uh, change. And we're, we couldn't be more excited and thankful that we have the opportunity to do this. When you talk about uh, the collaborations, say like, for instance, SARDA, how important mm-hmm. is having transportation available to these people for it's, jobs, it's huge. for food, for yeah. laundry? Yeah, for just like it is everywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, folks need to be able to get around. We need to have access to things like schools and grocery stores and health care and, and all these things. So, yeah, it's it's incredibly important. And I think that uh, a lot of people sometimes skim over um, how Habitat can help build strong community. We don't just build homes. Right. We don't just build uh, – uh, we don't just preserve homes. We also strengthen communities at their foundation. Um, and the home is so pivotal to that. And that's why we're always focused on decent, affordable housing, not just decent housing. The affordable part is important to us because that's what helps people thrive. When people can afford their homes, they can afford things like better education, better food for their families, better health care, uh, and opportunities, doors of opportunity just yes. open up in front of them. And so it's not just about having that shelter. Shelter. It's about being able to sustain that shelter uh, and the life that goes around it. So we we see decent affordable housing as a as a focal point because it's such a launching pad for every family that that yeah. receives it, that earns it, that works for it, uh, and that's why we we teach you know families who partner with Habitat things like financial literacy and mm-hmm. um, how to avoid predatory lending and how to make sure you set up wills and estates so that if something were to happen to you, your legacy of of your home can stay with your family and your children. So all kinds of things that that speak not just to housing, which is enough, <laughs> which is a lot, yeah, I should a say. That's a lot. Um, but, but it it's, goes it's hand not in everything. hand with so many exactly. other things, as you say. Yeah. Um, the area, what was it about this particular area that drew you to focus in and pinpoint this is the one we're going to make a difference in? Yeah, so... I mentioned the the home ownership rate. It was yes. very high. Um, not just compared. Do you know why that is? Um, you know, I think I think there are a lot of older residents in this particular community, mm-hmm. and and I think there was a real drive to um, stay, to be planted. Um, there's also a lot of history in this community, and people didn't want to just let go of that. And, um, you know, when I say it's a high, high home ownership rate, that's compared to Canton, but also compared to the nation. Interesting. Uh, and so we're, we, were, we were seeing that happen, but also, I mentioned a little bit before, the, the pride that already existed in mm-hmm. the community. There, there's a strong belief in that neighborhood. And um, we we caught wind of it and it encouraged us. And so we went through the neighborhood. We looked at every single property in the neighborhood and we did sort of this rating scale. You know, this is a great property, doesn't need any work. This, this homeowner is very invested, looks great. All the way down to this house just needs to be torn down. No one's yeah. living in it. Yeah. Um, it's just sitting there. It's a blight on the community. It's It, it decreases the neighborhood safety. 
we had the whole gamut of things. And then we just started communicating with residents and um, seeing who we could help and how we could help and jumped right in. Um, and, and thankfully, like I said, our renewal project partners, the financial backing behind this, uh, the volunteers who have helped, uh, mm-hmm. all of it comes together. We can't just do it on our own. So hugely helpful. You're also talking about, though, increasing the home values. Mm-hmm. So when those tax guys come around yep. and they reassess what the tax burden is going to be for these same families, does that does that in turn hurt them? We take all that into account when we're doing the investigation. Mm-hmm. So um, a part of the discussion with every family who partners with Habitat is, here's, here's what's going to happen. We're going to build this home or we're going to renovate this home. And when you get to the end, this is going to be your your payment across the board. This is how all the pieces line up. Our yes. family partnership department is superb at doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we, we make sure that before we do any work, the family who we're working with is going to be able to afford everything as it wraps awesome. up in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, not, we're not in the business of getting people in a home and then... Oh, well, you're back in the same position as before. You can't afford this. You there's can't, nothing fun about living in a home you can't There's nothing fun about that, afford. and it doesn't do anybody any good. Exactly. Um, Habitat for Humanity exists not just for that decent part like we've been talking about, but that yes. affordable part as well. So that is very much a part of the conversation as we go. Um, and and uh, at the end of the day, we are confident and the families are confident when they get those keys and they make that first zero interest mortgage payment um, that they're going to be able to afford that for so the long awesome. term. Not for the short term, not for um, you know uh, a month, not for one year. We're yes. talking about you're going to be able to afford this the whole way through until that house is paid off and that home is entirely yours. Um, and that is a, a thing that the family partnership team takes very seriously and does very well. And I'm sure you notice a, a decrease in crime in the areas mm-hmm. where the community is so invested. Yes, I'm absolutely. guessing. Is that true? It's true. I mean, that's what we're hearing from from neighborhood association mm-hmm. members uh, from. Uh, the residents that we talk to while we're out on while we're out on projects, of course, people mm-hmm. in the neighborhood are walking up to us and saying, "Hey, I got to tell you about this thing that happened. I was out doing this, and this happened." Um, and so, yes, we're getting that sentiment from the people who are actually living in the community. And it's not just the safety part, although that is incredible. It's, it's also the pride part. Yes. Um, we're hearing that residents are feeling proud again of the neighborhood that they have always wanted to be a part of and weren't going to leave, but now. There's this resurgence of, of excitement. You mentioned the ethnicity, the culture, the history of that area. And you're absolutely right. When people were coming, uh, you know, we are a nation of immigrants. And there was a group of people that they, they found that area. And, man, they have stayed generation to generation to generation, even passing down the same homes one after another. Yeah. And there is a great deal of pride of, of folks who found each other when they came over and mm-hmm. settled a little neighborhood together. Isn't it beautiful how it's that works? It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And then you're getting to see many cultures getting mm-hmm. to know each other as they kind of find that that beautiful spot again. And there is something very special about it, yeah, isn't there? And, and here's the other part of that. When a neighborhood is healthy and when it starts to thrive, you start to see more diversity because people want to be there. Yes. Uh, p- not only do you have the folks who want to stay, but you have the folks from outside who say, hey, this is that house. Look at that house and mm-hmm. look how great this community is. And we've got the bus stop and we've got easy access to all these things that we need to have a healthy life. And and uh, look at the neighborhood association and how involved it is. And I want to be a part of that. You know, they've got a community garden. I want to go grow things in that garden. I want to be a part of this community. And so it's not just... Um, you know, the past, but it's also you're building a future because you're giving people this drive to move into your community to be a part of the good things that are happening. And that's what we're seeing there. So I love that the diversity is increasing. I love that, um, you know, the pride and the safety are increasing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been an incredible thing. And we, of course, go back to celebration with Katie and Ashley last week who got their keys and Willie and Christine who shared all these things with us and with the whole crowd that gathered. It was a beautiful thing. When you talk about uh, things that are great to have there in that area, let's talk about food. It, because we've been very concerned about certain areas becoming food deserts. When there's not people living there anymore, the grocery stores pick up steaks and 
head out of town. So what about access to things like groceries and those essential things? Yeah, that that exists in this area. That's awesome. Um, and, and it's fantastic. So the, you know, lots of great school, um, great churches, great mm-hmm. grocery, great you know, you're you're right off of 62, essentially. Yes. Um, and it's uh, it's easy access to just everything that Canton has to offer, especially with, you know, improved bus opportunities and so forth. That there, really yeah. helps, doesn't mm-hmm. it? So the people who are, oh, well, I just looked at the clock, Kevin. It does go very <laughs> fast, fast, doesn't it? Yeah. I've got my next question for you. Okay. You can think about as far as the intergenerational aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that will be after these words. You're listening to our community.